but the vampire was a dark character that emerged because there were so many, shall we say, diseases that, and so many frightening things that people could not explain that went bump in the night. The interesting thing to me is that it locates itself in the fifth chakra. It's about taking power. And even though no one sat around and said, let's create a character that, that um, weakens us by chopping on our fifth chakra on our will, it is a collective statement symbolically that we are powerless against this. Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to do the vampire archetype. This is an absolutely fascinating archetype for all kinds of reasons. I, I always meet people who will say that person's a vampire and I got to get away from that person. That person's just got vampiric energy. And so the vampire is one of those archetypes that has um, made its way into our social energy and our society. But it's also become popular in movies and in TV shows and uh, in a in a very um, peculiar way, because it's gone from being this horrific nighttime stalker to almost a romantic creature. So we're, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But I want to go back to the history. I want to begin with the history of vampires. Um, everyone knows Count Dracula. I mean, the Bram Stoker story. And I think it's so funny. You know, years ago, when my niece, Rachel, was little, I wanted to show her the movie uh, Dracula that I saw when I was a child. And I thought I thought it was really quite, quite frightening, actually. And But in the meantime, um, HDTV came on and, and this high-definition stuff. And so we sat down in my house, and I said to her, it was a sleepover, and I said, now, honey, this might scare you because I remember it scared me. And so now it's in high definition and in comes the bat and you could see it on the string because it's high definition. And she looks at me and she says, ah, I'm going to bed. And I thought, oh, well, so much for Dracula. But that was the last time I watched Dracula, but I've read the book. And I don't know if you've read the book Count Dracula by Bram Stoker, but it's quite a read. He supposedly based that story on Vlad the Impaler who uh, lived in Transylvania, Romania. And supposedly what he did was during the Ottoman Empire, when um, he wanted to fight off the incoming enemy, he would impale his enemies. And he would, rumor had it, he would dine among these men being impaled and dip his bread into blood and just horrific stories. I mean, horrific stories, but nevertheless, legends come from this kind of thing. Vampires stalk at night and they feed off blood. Now, um, as the legends build on these stories, um, they stalk at night, but sunlight kills them. So uh, you're safe during the day, but not at night. Another uh, uh, historic episode that encouraged belief in vampires was the plague, because oftentimes when people died of the plague, their gums would bleed. And so that would be an indication that maybe they were vampires, and that's, that's how come they died, and etc. cetera. Uh, there was a blood disease called porphy porphyria porphyria i hope i said that right anyway it's a blood disease of boils or something and that that happens when you're exposed to sunlight and of course you know stories like this like vampires and other really horrific kind of things that human beings start believing or generating come out of fear and ignorance that we're 
that people are capable of believing because they don't know how to uh, fight against a force that is rooted in ignorance. And um, tragically, we're still plagued with that characteristic in human nature. But the vampire was a dark character that emerged because there were so many, shall we say, diseases that, and so many frightening things that people could not explain that went bump in the night. The interesting thing to me is that it locates itself in the fifth chakra. It's about taking power. And even though no one sat around and said, let's create a character that, that um, weakens us by chopping on our fifth chakra on our will, it is a collective statement, symbolically, that we are powerless against this. We, there's no choice we can make to battle this, to battle the plague, to battle this nocturnal fear. And so it is um, a character that perhaps emerged out of the collective that comes from a collective fear of that human beings tap into when they feel powerless against that which they do not understand. Now it's fascinating to me that a character that, like the vampire, that is fundamentally destructive, evil, terrifying, has morphed in our time into a character that is that has been seen and pictured in our TV shows as charming, cute, romantic. Um, I watched this series called True Blood, it, you know, because I wanted to understand this vampire thing. And it's pictured as this romantic figure, so much so that it, I was reading articles about it, that in its heyday, when this TV show was really popular, uh, women were moving to that town in Oregon where Twin Forks or something like that, where is that Twin Peaks? I'm confusing it with something, but Fork something or other Oregon, where um, this was shot thinking, I don't know what they were thinking, that they were going to meet a vampire in the woods. I have no idea. But the vampire, and then there was that uh, other one, vampire or something with a girl, <clears throat> um, Buffy, Buffy the Vampire Hunter or something. I don't know. But these shows show this, the way in which the idea of the vampire was somehow shifted into a benign, if not romantic, seductive figure who lives among us in, in a very different way almost civilizing this darkness. Now I want to present a different view, view of this to you, completely different, which is one of the characteristics of the vampire is that they live forever unless they are exposed to light or uh, a stake to the heart or some part of myth like that. But the idea is that they live forever. Now eternal life has become a value in our society, a t eternal physical life, as opposed to eternal life. And as we have become a society ever more obsessed with the longevity of our physical life to the exclusion of any interest in eternal life. I mean, I have taught now for decades and Honestly, I can tell you, nobody, nobody ever asks me if anything they do will have anything, will, will they be accountable in another life, in the next life, for anything they're doing in this life? Many times I've been asked if what happens to them in this life is the result of something that happened to them in a previous life. So it's obvious that the theme of eternity 
is somewhere in someone's unconscious or conscious mind. But the idea of dying in this lifetime, of accountability in another life, even though it's obvious if you're asking me about karma, if you're asking me if something that's going on in this life that you're confronting has, might be, might be from a karmic episode from a previous life, that idea of accountability, of karmic something or other is woven into one's thinking, but somehow it doesn't extend into the idea that the choices we make in this life are going to be something we are held accountable for when we leave this life, that there is a, no, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. The object is to make this body defy gravity, live as long as it can, become this object of eternity that it's not designed to be ever, and ignore the part of us that might in fact be equipped to dwell in eternity, because that's not part of our five sensory world. So here comes this vampire creature that morphs into something attractive, even romantic, that offers this idea in TV and in movies that in fact, you know what, if you drink blood, you can live forever. Yep, that's it, that's it. And it becomes this popular romantic figure while eternity becomes this hands off, don't go there. It's just fascinating to me that that has shifted and trans transitioned in our collective society. Another way I think we should look at the vampire archetype from a psychic point of view is that it is when someone refers to someone as being vampiric, what they're referring to is they are draining my energy, which is another way of, you know, um, it's not quite your blood, but it is your life force. And it is possible to, to be with someone who in fact does drain your energy. What I learned as a medical intuitive is that, um, you know, what makes this time we're alive so extraordinary to me is that we really are living at a time when our energy anatomy, our energetic reality is trying to make its way in as a partner to our physical reality. Our mystical intelligence, our intuitive intelligence is trying to merge with our intellectual intelligence to become a team to become a team, that's the way it should operate, as a team, not one or the other, but both, but both. It should be both. And just as you protect your physical body, just as you take steps to protect your physical body by, by what you eat, by, by how, how you, where you go at night, by all the, stage, all the things we do to protect our physical body, by making sure that we don't go to dangerous parts of the hood, you know, this kind of thing, all the things we do. In that same way, those we need to take protections to guard our energetic body, which we don't do because we live in this world, we live in this state of consciousness where our energetic body is not yet real for us, not like our physical body. It's not yet real. It, it, may be, it, it becomes a real thing to discuss when you're ill. And you say, you know, my energy is not, not, I'm just not feeling energetic. But it's not an everyday thing where, in fact, you realize I need to protect myself in, in ways, just in ordinary ways when I go out the door. I need to... Um, be aware that there are collective psychic free radicals in the atmosphere that are governed by the laws of magnetic attraction. And that if I am not 
protecting myself by my state of consciousness, by, by, by what I generate within myself. I will attract to myself psychic free radicals that will attach themselves to my system and drain my system because the laws of energy are the laws of energy. It's as simple as that. The laws of the universe are the laws of the universe. This is the nature of God. God is law. God is not an off-planet creature looking down upon us that looks like a human being. The nature of God is law. It's as simple as that. I can scream that from the mountaintops, but you have to pay attention to how the laws work, cause and effect, action and reaction. We are here as creative little entities and we have the laws to abide by. And when, and, 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 and the whole role of consciousness and self-esteem, to esteem oneself, to become aware of how to use your power, how to protect your power, is, is the name of the game here. And that every act you do is an act of creation. And therefore, when you're with somebody and you feel someone's energy pulling on you, you're not imagining that. And how does that happen? One of the ways that people attach and drain you is complaining. Constant complainers, that is a vampiric quality, or shall I say trait. That's a vampiric trait. They complain. What they're doing, just energetically, is they're saying, I don't, I'm not generating enough energy from inside of myself. So what I'm going to do is attach myself to your willpower and I'm going to use mine to complain about something, and then you will provide me with positive energy, with optimism, with hope, and then I will go, do, 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 and I will feel empowered, and then you'll detach. I have no, but that person will have no intention of actually acting on that power. In fact, they'll simply like feeding off of you, Go home for a day, feed off of that, not use it because it's not their energy. It's yours. But it will be like a transfusion. It's like an energetic transfusion that they will use and then the next day they have to find more. Which is why you think after a while, I can't be around that person. I just, you know, we have the same conversation. It's the same thing. And nothing ever changes. Because you can't, here's the truth, pay attention to this. You cannot create off of someone else's energy. You absolutely cannot create off of someone else's energy. You, we can only create off of our own life force, our own. That is what karma is about. We cannot utilize someone else's life force and think that we can make something happen from their life force. It's not possible. People can supply us with grace through prayer, and that is the supplement that we can utilize, grace through prayer. But, we, but, if, you, but if you are vampiric in your style and you use um, complaining and you, 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 you think that that's going to help and you, you might feel a temporary, I'm so supported by that person because they listen to me. But by the next day, you're right back where you started. Because that's how the, that's how the laws of energy work. You cannot live off of someone else's energy. And this is why, from a different point of view, we are all called to develop our sense of self. We are all called to develop our sense of self-esteem. We are all wired to, to listen and hear our intuitive guidance that says, do this, do that, do this, because it empowers us in order so that we can make decisions that further our own life journey. You see vampiric events. When I see someone like, I won't mention his name, but when I see rallies 
where people who are fundamentally dis see themselves as disempowered because they don't like what's happening in the society, because they feel like they haven't been listened to, because they feel angry, because whatever. And they go and they listen to someone who says, you should be angry. You should be that way. You should be. And I'll make everything better. And they go, rah, 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 rah. And it's all this anger. That's stirring up a vampiric event. That's a very vampiric event. And the main vampire, the dark vampire, is feeding off of that energy. And everybody there feels as if they've gotten a flush full of life support. It doesn't last long. And in order to get that life support, they have to be there. They have to be there. They can't generate it on their own because it's not authentic life support. It is this artificial, artificial darkness, an artificial blood transfusion. And in order for them to stay alive on that transfusion, they have to constantly, constantly reach out for a supply of anger or a supply of rage because they can't seem to generate anything above that. They have to break out and start generating self-esteem in order to move beyond that field of anger. That is a vampiric event, if I've ever seen one, which is why they become, um, that's why the, the Nazis held their events at night. They were very dark and they were very, the intention was to drain people of their personal will, to drain them psychically so that they became addicted to a certain mantra, addicted to a certain way and terrified to make any other choice. That was a form of dark magic vampirism which is a whole other history we could go into, but not today. I have to tell you that it, if you find yourself as someone who reaches out to others as a complainer, I have to tell you, stop it. Really, stop. Complaining is the, one of the most unhealthy things you can do. It is one thing, for example, to say, how's your day? And you say, you know what? I'm having a bad day and blah, 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 blah. That's not a complaint. That's just like a commentary. But if you find yourself repeating your stories and not taking any positive action, then you have to look and think, is this vampiric? And it's hard. And, 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 and honestly, if, if you find eventually what you'll find is people will pull away from you because that's their own survival mechanism in acting and saying, I can't be around. I can't let that person drain my energy. And if you are somebody who is around a vampiric personality, then I have to tell you, you have two choices. One is to say to the person, I'm not listening to this anymore. I'm going to cut off my energy supply. I'll talk to you about anything else. Really, I'll talk to you about anything else. I'll talk to you about what you want to do, what you intend to do, what you are doing now that's positive, but I will not listen to you tell me what's not working. I will only listen to you say what is going to work and what you are working on now. Not what you want to do, but what are you doing now, right now, to make a difference. It has to be an active. It has to be active. What are you doing right now? Not what you want to do, because you'll postpone that. But what you are doing right now, and if you're not doing anything positive, I can't talk to you today. So as soon as you are actively doing something, call me up. Call me up, and I'll be right there. Otherwise, I'm doing you a big favor. You may not know it, but I'm doing us both a big favor. And this is the most healing thing I can do. 
that's how you deal with a vampire. That's how you deal with the vampire in yourself, which, by the way, is very difficult. But that's how you deal with the vampire in someone else. It is, um, there's nothing romantic about this archetype at all. And if you think there is, you are mistaken. The last type of, uh, I think, vampiric behavior is medicating. Medication can turn someone into a vampire. And that's um, where you cut off your capacity to make choices for yourself that are empowered. And you convince yourself you're not capable of it. Um, and this society supports that. It supports that. It supports the idea that we are not capable of becoming resilient, strong people, of becoming able to make it through dark passages, but we simply need to medicate ourselves in, in dark times. And I think there are times when medication might well be called for. That's true. In times of dark depression, etc. But we can't live there. We, we can't live there. Because medication is a form of vampirism that, that can keep a person from finding yet another way through. Um, and I don't speak without compassion or, or, or sympathy, um, but I am saying that the capacity to make choices, clear conscious choices, is the greatest tool you have. It's the greatest tool you have. And, and honestly, I, I look at our society and I see how much of our social climate is now directed at taking choices away from people, away from women, away from our capacity to vote, away from our capacity to actually empower ourselves. And that's a whole nother discussion, but I ask you to take a look that this is like a very dangerous turn of events that is horrific for our future, that there is a type of vampiric, that the vampire has become more than just a TV figure. It is a psychic field. It's an active agent in the psychic field that is draining people and draining us. So to that I would say, you know, seek the light inside of you. Seek the light. I will always, always believe that the way through, there's always a way through. And that even the simplest prayer is more light than any darkness. Just get me through this. Get me through this. Get me through this. Okay. So, and you know what? Here's, I'm going to end with this. You know what? No change that matters is easy. No change that matters is easy. Um, nothing that matters is that easy, really. Uh, I don't know why that is, but it is. It just, and maybe it's because at the end of it, the empowerment you feel is so genuine. It's so genuine. So, um, that's the thing about the vampires. So, I, you know what? And I always feel like I could say so much more, but... Um, that's all for now. And this always makes me want to go back to teaching a whole class on, on sacred contracts and on archetypes and going back to doing whole big things on it because there's just so much to teach about each one. 
and about how it impacts you and the value of being able to spot an archetypal pattern in yourself and in others. It is, it's, it's like having an inner lens that is so accurate and so empowering. And this is an archetypal universe. Everything is a part of a symbolic force. <sighs> Goes on forever. Okay, everybody. Next week. What am I going to do next week? I don't know. I'll surprise you. Okay. Thank you, everyone.